Yeah, and it's, again, I'm not saying to play dirty, but it's kind of one of those things where I always tell the keepers, if you go in timid, or you go in for the boys, older and boys, if you go in half-assed, you're going to get hurt. That's the bottom line is you're going to get hurt. You have to go into every single ball 100% and be the aggressor. Otherwise, you are going to get hurt. You know, safety and keeper go hand in hand. But keeper gets the advantage as long as you're in that box for the most part. As long as you're going for the ball. If it's plain as day that you're going for the guy, you will get called and you will probably get kicked out of the game. So it's a fine line for that, but if you're making every effort possible for the ball, and even better if you end up with the ball, you're probably going to be protected more times than not. The referees are actually protect really the protect. keeper more than anything, as yep. long as they're, as long as it's, as it's in their defense. But like you said, if you if you're starting to go out of their way to hurt someone, they'll they'll get the priority yep. card. Yep. So I mean, if Ted comes up and challenges me, go ahead. And I go like this, and he challenges me, and I lose the ball, and he hit me. I'm going to get the call probably more times than not nine times out of ten. But you know, going up like that again, I showed a bad technique piece there. What did I do? I was kind of coming in here. I turned into Ted like this. I have no defense whatsoever. I need to turn towards Ted and at least be able to see what's going on here. Okay? Shane, the thing I was going to say is we're working on the hand drills right now. And the thing that I've noticed, and it's even with my daughter now, she doesn't yell keeper enough. I mean, the importance of a goalie just yelling keeper, letting your defenders know that you're there. Plus, it's an intimidating factor to the other to start doing this as we're doing this and keeper. Yep. You know that? Yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just these little tiny techniques. I mean, what he's talking about there, Peter, give me a ball again. Nice high one. Sean, ready for it? A <laughs> <laughs> little bit more angle for oh, okay. All right, ready? Set. Keep on! Go. Okay. It's all right. Immediately, what did he do? <laughs> right, right. That's what he's talking about is it's an intimidation factor. It is so hard, though, to... I have been harping for years. Like and that's what I'm this, saying. Is and I cannot, I go, I didn't hear you. I'm yelling from the silo. Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. Is this, is this might be a good point right now is where we get him to do it then when we're doing that small hand drills. Exactly. If we yep. start keeper, 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 yep. keeper, keeper. I mean, as we're going back and forth, that might be the ticket. Yeah. Integrate some sort of little game. You know, every time you say it, you get this. Every time you say it, you get that. All right. You know, if you say it, if you say it 30 times in the practice, legitimately 30 times in the practice, we're going to Derek. Oh, yeah. Something to that. Uh, emphasizing the importance. So again, I don't want to get too far into the high stuff because that's kind of a more advanced uh, piece and advanced technique. But one thing I will I'll go on beyond there is just get them familiar with the punching technique. And you can kind of do this if they got some time or whatnot. Keep her juggling. Players juggle with their feet, keepers juggle with their fists. So they just have the ball popping out in front of them. If they start to get it in front of their faces, but make them go up high. Have them get, get it above their head. To go from there. So that's uh, one there. thing that you can do with them. Once we get into the goal, I'll kind of get into more of you know kind of that push and that parry piece. But again. That's a kind of an advanced piece that I don't necessarily want to get into. I wouldn't encourage too many of the 11s and the 12s at that point anyways to be doing too many like back dives or anything like that. But the key thing that I would point out, let's try to catch it at the highest point, and then eventually, Peter, you want to give me a nice high one? Make him start jumping, trying to grab that ball at the highest point possible with the W. And like Fred was saying, we're up here again. Keep! <laughs> Back up a little bit, make them come. <laughs> Advanced technique. Advanced. I thought yeah, you were asking was, for it. That was a bad one. <laughs> so we're up. Okay. Right, make them back up. See, I'm actually coming forward to the ball. If I just jump straight up in the air, I'm not really attacking that ball at a good angle. So that's why I say back up, come to it. Back up, come to it. If it's a situation, give me one that's going to go over. So I'm going to go. <laughs> So, well, I thought you wanted to do it. No, that was fine. <laughs> again, what I should have done is I should have said away or something to that nature. But again, I realized I came up to try to beat the ball. You want it? Yep. It's not happening. And I try to push it up and over. But I wasn't falling back. That's an emergency situation. Yeah. I am out of out of position, or it took some sort of weird deflection, and I got to go back. But even if I'm going to push it, 
I still came forward and then pushed it up and over. That little momentum going forward is going to elevate the ball from going here. If you're Hopefully you're back, popping it over. That, uh, yeah, what happens is if you fall it back and then you just try to, like this, you just push it into the upper net. Uh -huh. So by coming and reaching it forward and then pushing it, you're giving a little momentum. Over. Up and over. Okay? Or if I close my fist, I can just kind of pop it over. Is there a technique for closing the fist? Close them tight. Get those thumbs out of there. That would be the only thing for safety reasons. Up and over. Myself personally, if I'm going to be punching the ball, it's because I got a crowd of people in front of me. I don't want to be punching it going backwards because, for one, here to here, that's two and a half inches. Yep. So I'm losing a lot of space. Plus, on a punch, if I'm double fisting it, I'm even shorter because just right. physically I can't get my arms up there. So here's a better option when I'm punching the ball it's because I'm in a crowd. <laughs> up and up. I usually, myself, I only do it one handed. For the reason being is, again, two handed for me, it's just too much effort to get up there. But if I have to run out and I have four big boys in front of me, then maybe I will come up for a double fisted punch, but it's going to go that way. It's not going to go up. So, up and up. Okay? So, that's about it for the hand pieces that I had. So next, we'll get into the uh, diving techniques. Everyone's favorite, right? <laughs> Again, we'll start off very simply, very small. But I guess Man before, down. before we move out of the hands, is there any questions on the hand stuff?